Well, good morning. Uh, I want to emphasize I am not a salesman for Springer Publishing, which does produce the... Uh, but in fact, many of the people at this conference, including some of you in this room, have been working very hard over a number of years on the encyclopedia. Uh, and I think we can try to make it better as a teaching tool for some of the activities like was described this morning. Now at this point, there are two print versions of the encyclopedia. The second version, at least, is online. However, well, let me say first, why, why do we want an encyclopedia of astrobiology when we have Wikipedia? Uh, that's a question that I'm often asked. And I think the basic point is that in the encyclopedia, the entries are oriented toward astrobiology. So, for example, in our section on astrochemistry, we have an entry on ethylene oxide, which concentrates on its role in interstellar chemistry, the sort of thing which is not discussed in Wikipedia. Also, our entries in the encyclopedia are reviewed three times. I'm not quite sure how this is done in Wikipedia, but uh, this triple review is interesting. An article is first reviewed by um, a specialist in that field. That's followed by what we, by what we call a naive review or a non-specialist review by somebody outside of the field to make sure that the entry is written in a way that it will be accessible to anyone in the broad range of fields in astrobiology and in fact to the interested layman. And then finally there is a review by one of the editors uh, to make sure that the style and content are consistent with other entries in that section. Now what we are working on now is an online version which will be continuously updated, what Springer likes to call their living edition. And we want this edition to have something in the beginning to describe what's actually in the encyclopedia and what, that will illustrate the great diversity of astrobiology. We think this is needed to make the, this useful to students and newcomers to astrobiology. A couple of more entry, examples of uh, typical entries, for example, on uh, acetamide, you can see we described the astrobiological significance um, and the discovery in the interstellar medium and in comets. Uh, again, stressing the relevance to astrobiology. So we have short entries, sort of one or two paragraphs, uh, medium entries, long entries, and what we call overviews, like the entry on diffuse interstellar bands, sort of the oldest question in um, unsolved problem in uh, astrophysics, uh, is uh, a full six pages. But the problem with the current version of the encyclopedia uh, is that it has no table of contents at the beginning. It's purely alphabetical. It begins with this article, this particular interstellar radical. Um, alphabetically, things are listed by number here, but then it goes to the A's, B's, C's, and D's. So this is not very useful if you come to it and open it and, and say, well, what is really, what really is astrobiology? What does it cover? Now, as editors, we can look at it and we can see that it has been divided into fields, for example, astrophysics and astrochemistry, which has these subfields, stars and nucleosynthesis, star formation, and so on. The planetology, planetology section has sections on formation, and inner solar system, outer solar system, and so on. And each of these has a whole list of entries in that field. So as, as editors, we can look at all these fields and we can open them up and see what, what all the individual entries are. Um, the most recent version of the encyclopedia has added some new sections, biogeochemistry, history and philosophy of early of science uh, from antiquity to 1800. You might wonder, uh, what is there about astrobiology in the classical world? Well, I'd say go read Lucretius, and he will tell you about how all uh, there must be these other worlds in the universe and they must be populated. Now, as I said, each of our sections 
um, has a whole range of, of entries on specific topics, and let me come back to that. But let me just point out here that we have a wide range of, of editors with expertise in all of these different fields, and uh, each editor is responsible for a particular section, and you'll see uh, it's very international. We have editors from Spain, France, uh, Switzerland, uh, the U.S., and Canada, and uh, Portugal, and other countries. So this is the sort of thing that we want Springer to put at the, the beginning of the online version. Um, for each field, uh, we, we will list all of the entries um, so that if you're a student and you want to know what astrobiology is and you come to the encyclopedia, you can look at this introductory material and see what sort of subjects are covered uh, under each of these sections. Now I might say it's been a real effort to push on Springer to get them to do this, to get away from their purely alphabetical listing of entries. <coughs> they wanted us to put this alphabetically um, originally we called it Table of Contents, and thus it would have appeared in the encyclopedia under T. Uh, to get to, to put it at the front, I think we're going to have to tell them to put a one in front of astrobiology disi by discipline so that their uh, IT people can manage to put it at the front of the uh, online version instead of buried someplace within it. So, and you see, so for any, all of these sections, we have all of these uh, different entries um, in in these different aspects of, of astrobiology. So, so that way we think that uh, we can get students and people from other disciplines to approach this and, and find this a really useful teaching tool um, no matter what aspect of astrobiology they're interested in. Thank you.